Wow. Having a vision board changed the whole game for me. Things that I didn't even think were possible that were just literally my imagination have now come into fruition. In fact, I'm now living part of the life that I created on my original vision board. It has been absolutely life-changing. Hi, my name is Sabira Jones. I'm also known as the Corporate Hippie. I am a former stress addict and recovering perfectionist. Visualization to me means an opportunity to escape. I've always been a daydreamer, always being picked up by teachers for being distracted or not paying attention in class. So I think my visualization practice started from when I was a child. My early 20s were definitely a soap opera. In my final year of university, I received a phone call from my sister in London to let me know that my mum had just had a heart attack. My mum was in a medically induced coma that they couldn't take her out of. Yeah, my world crumbled beneath my feet. There was nothing I could do in London. The doctors couldn't do anything in that moment, so I made a choice to go back to uni and continue studying. That way, I had something I was in control over some way to distract myself as opposed to being at home and feeling completely helpless. I continued my degree and graduated. By my 23rd birthday, I was waitressing, I was working as a volunteer at the Fair Trade Foundation and visiting my severely ill mum in hospital. All of this made me burn out. I remember waking up on my 23rd birthday thinking, right, going out this evening, shots with the girls, but instead I woke up in immense amount of pain and was admitted into hospital. Spent a week in hospital fighting off sepsis. The year after, I thought, life has been relatively calm this year. It might be time for me to get a quote-unquote real job. Unfortunately, my mum passed away suddenly but peacefully the day after my birthday. And then I started my new job in the investment industry four days after her funeral. Buried on a Thursday, started the job on the Monday. I just turned up. I showed up to work. I did the work. I was just going through the motion. I wasn't present because I was numbing myself to the pain I'd been experiencing for the last two years. And now I'm grieving the physical loss of my mum. It was difficult. It was tough, and on top of that, I've just started an industry in a particular role which was really demanding. I was working hard, making money, and then going on holidays, playing hard. But in all honesty, those holidays were me escaping the realities of my life. On the surface, I had achieved work-life balance, but the reality is, being that resilient was taking a toll on my body. Fast forward nine months, I went to bed with the flu, woke up the next morning and couldn't feel anything below my hips. They ran some tests, they sent me to A&E, but they didn't really know what was going on with me. That was the start of a whole host of symptoms. Sporadic immobility, sporadic blindness, bladder incontinence. And I thought, right, a change is as good as a rest. What if I just get a new job? Despite the disabling symptoms I was having, I was successful in getting a promotional job, 10k pay rise, less work. I was aware that stress was having an impact on my health when I was sat in front of my neurologist. And he said, Sabira, I'm 98% sure you have multiple sclerosis. I was dumbfounded. Silent tears of rage denial, desperation, all the emotions were running through me at that period of time. I asked, where did I go wrong? And he said, you haven't. You haven't done anything wrong. However, at the age of 25, I'm sat in front of a neurologist being diagnosed with a really debilitating chronic health condition. By spring of 2019, I could no longer leave my bedroom. I was struggling to get to work. And it got to a point where I just couldn't do it anymore. And so I took sick leave. 
had no idea what my life was going to look like now that I'd received an official diagnosis. When you are diagnosed with a chronic health condition, you have to go through the five stages of grief because you are grieving the life you once knew. Once I'd gone through that process, I decided I wanted more from life. I owed it to myself, my family, but more importantly, my mum to stay alive. I had taken a holiday. I went to one of my favourite islands and it was the most exhilarating holiday I've had to date. Once that wheelchair touched the tarmac, I was able to stand up. My health felt incredible. Whilst I was out there, I started imagining what would it be like if I could live in a hot climate and a slower pace of life. What is it that I can do? That's where I started envisioning, allowing my mind to expand and explore what options were out there. I returned to England, returned to my office, and something in me said, create a vision board. A vision board is quite simply a sheet of paper or card where you place images of things that you would like to have in your life. I did it on my lunch break. I remember using the printers in my job to start looking for images of the life that I wanted to live. So what I chose to do was do four different areas of my life. So in the first quadrant, it was this island life, this villa, the sunshine. Being able to wear a bikini every day, because that's my favourite outfit, like, let's be honest. The second quadrant was surrounded by food, so I wanted to have an anti-inflammatory diet. I didn't want to have MS symptoms anymore. That was definitely on my vision board. It had MS with a big red crossed out circle over it. In the other quadrant, it was, who is it I wanted to be? How do I want to feel? And in the final quadrant, it was about my professional aspirations. I want to be a coach. With the vision board that I had created, I decided that I needed to put it up on display. So I bought a glass frame and I hung it up. I then decided to write a note to myself and stick it on the ceiling. I ended up writing three notes to myself, an affirmation with the name of my company, a written version of my vision board, but the most important thing I had up there was a five-step plan to get me out of bed in the morning. It started off with meditating, journaling, stretching, having a shower with a playlist and do something productive that day. I needed to encourage myself with simple tasks because if I achieve those five things, I've achieved something for the day. I didn't understand the significance of that action at that point in time. But I knew there had to be more to life because when you're at rock bottom, you have two choices. You can stay where you are or you can go up. I got to the end of that working week and that was the last time they saw me in person. I handed in my notice and I took off sick. My final day of work was actually the day after my birthday, 30th of June, same day that my mum passed. Things always happen around that time. I do believe birthdays are your personal new year. And for me, it's the start of something new each and every time. When you resign from your job, it feels incredible. The euphoria is real. But if you don't have something else you're going into, anxiety sets in. That stress, the financial stress, triggered the flare up. That's when I realized that stress was a factor. And if I redefine MS to mean multiple stress and not multiple sclerosis, I can put myself back in the driving seat And that's what I did. So there's a few things in my life that I knew I needed to take a look at, which was becoming debt-free, take control of my emotions. I had to look at certain relationships and I also had to create boundaries. And once I put those things in place, I saw a huge shift in my health in the amount of episodes of MS I was experiencing. So knowing the areas that I needed to fix, I now needed to know what I wanted to replace them with. What type of relationships do I want? What type of finances do I want? If I want a villa on an island somewhere, that's going to take some bucks. Having a vision board allows you to do that. Nothing's happening by accident or default. It's happening by design. You have designed it. So 
So I think the first time I realized that my vision board was becoming my reality, the muscle fatigue, the MS fatigue, the numbness of limbs, the blindness, that stopped. That, honestly, on my board was the most unattainable thing because I'd been told that it wasn't possible. If you were to ask my consultant about my MS, she would say it's aggressive, it's explosive. Because medically, given the amount of episodes and flares I've had in a very short period of time, that's how it'd be categorised. If you were to ask me who lives with myself every day, I've had the debilitating symptoms in remission for over two years without medical intervention. I now get up six times a week and go to the gym and work out. I can weight train. I can do high intensity interval training without any issues. I can do everything that I ever dreamt of without having to fight against my body. Welcome to my bedroom. This is my personal sanctuary. So one thing I do really love about my bedroom is I have two sets of windows. One where I can see the sun rising from the east. For my daily practice, I typically wake up to my left, which means the first thing I see is my dream board, the big vision board I made in 2019. So over on this wall here, on the left-hand side, I have my dream board. It's incredibly colourful because it had to draw the eye. So it's bright, vibrant colours. That in itself is a reminder, is motivation that I need to get up and get going for the day. But like most humans, I like to stay in bed just a little bit longer. So I roll onto my back and then I see the notes on the ceiling that once upon a time literally saved my life. That in itself is a reminder of just how far I've come. On the right hand side of my room, as we go back towards my bedroom door, are the annual vision boards. The things that I want to achieve within the year. I now create mini vision boards to have a more concentrated and focused approach to what I'd like to experience in the new year. It takes me closer to the bigger vision on the dream board. So I split them into three different areas. So the first area is my personal business. So whenever I go in and out of my room to start my day, I have to go past them and again, I see them. The area is my personal life, which covers my fitness goals, my aesthetic goals, the type of experience I want to have. A lot of my practice is actually subconscious which I think works really well when we live in a fast paced world. If you've got your vision around you, your subconsciously always taking it in. Whether you're aware of it or not, you've always got a frame of reference to go back to. It's really important for me that I am intentional with each and every one of my days. If I wake up and I know that the reason why I'm waking up is because there's a purpose and the purpose is to get me closer to that dream board, then I know that I'm going to have a great day ahead because I'm working towards my dream, my purpose, my mission. I would never say I've cured MS. It is very much a real condition. But what I did know is I didn't want a life reliant on medication. Now that I am in a great place in my health, both mentally and physically, I've been able to put the symptoms into remission without medical intervention. I'm now looking to take medicine as a preventative approach as opposed to taking it out of fear and desperation. If you had told me that creating a vision board would transform my entire life, I wouldn't have believed you. How is it possible that printing out pictures and sticking them on a piece of card would change my life? But that's exactly what has happened. Because it enabled me to dare myself and scare myself to dream big and take full ownership of my life for the first time ever. I was no longer doing what I thought was the right thing to do what was expected of me or what the world thought I should do. For the first time, I was like, right, what does Sabira Jones want to do? Who does she want to be? What type of life does she want to live? Seeing those images in front of me gave me something to work towards. The vision board was showing me exactly where I needed to go. There are endless opportunities in life. What we see directly in front of us doesn't have to be it. There's a whole world out there. We are just one step away from it. Creating a vision board allows you to start dreaming and imagining and envisioning other things that are outside of your current reality. There's one thing Bob Marley says about emancipate yourself from mental slavery. That's the only thing that's holding people back most times. Everything we see in this world was created in the mind first and someone dared themselves to make it a reality. We can do that with our own lives. The Practices was produced by Radio Wolfgang for Light. 
For more information, visit light.app. This episode featured Sabira Jones. It was produced by Holly Aquilina and Cass Denton, with sound design by Holly Aquilina. The executive producer was Ellie Di Martino. 